All right, I have a new keyword tool for you today. It's called Keyword Gap. Folks at AppSumo were nice enough to give me access to this tool. I'm not being paid to create this video. Nobody at Keyword Gap had to see this video before it was released. All my opinions are my own. And so I'll let you know what I think about this tool. Now, if you've been a purchaser of software from AppSumo in the past, you may remember a tool called WriterZen. So WriterZen was really popular on AppSumo. I think it's been a little over a year since its release on AppSumo. Keyword Gap is a tool that is developed by the same team. In fact, to me, Keyword Gap is sort of like WriterZen Lite. Now, I'm not sure why Writer's End just didn't re-release on AppSumo again as a lifetime deal. For example, a tool like Neuron Writer has been on AppSumo, off AppSumo, back on. So a lot of companies will, you know, just pop onto AppSumo again and re-release their tool as a lifetime deal for a certain amount of time. Can't tell you why Writer's End decided not to do this and basically rebranded a piece of their functionality as Keyword Gap. Let's take a look at Keyword Gap on AppSumo so we can see what the pricing structure is like. You can buy in at one code at $69 and it says it's an AI powered guide to uncovering hidden keyword opportunities. They claim that it's an alternative to SEMrush Personally, I think it's an alternative to tools like Keywords People Use or Low Fruits. Those are two tools that I really like a lot and have subscriptions to. That's what I would say they're an alternative to. I'm not sure if this is really an alternative to SEMrush. I don't think it's as full featured, but that's my opinion. And it'll tell you everything about the tool, what you're going to get out of it. They have an AI writing tool that's a piece of this package. Personally, I would prefer to use a dedicated long form AI writer like Agility Writer or SEO Writing. I am really not going to go into the AI writer tool piece of this because I don't think that's really what the forte of this tool is. Personally, I wish keyword tools or any other kind of tool that helps out with SEO would just concentrate and focus on one specific task and not always attach AI writers to everything because we already have lots of good long form AI writing tools that we can go out and purchase and use that are made specifically for that task. What do you get for $69? If you buy in at one code, you're gonna get 50 keyword searches per month. That's probably the big thing to think about is if you wanna go out, you've got a new niche, you know, how many different keyword strings do you want to search for? So you're gonna get 50 keyword searches per month. You can import up to 3000 keywords. You can have 30 keyword lists. You can connect one Gmail account. So there is a place where you can connect to your Google Search Console. I am not sure if that's what they mean by this. I didn't see another place to connect my Gmail account. I may have missed that when I did my first walkthrough on my own. You can create projects up to 10. You can have 20 maximum projects. So 10 projects per month, 20 total maximum projects. Again, 50 articles can be created per month with AI and a 50,000 AI word per month limit. I'm not even going to talk about that as part of this video. Quickly, what I want to show you first is the dashboard. So this is your dashboard and you get everything to look up and find keywords in Keyword Gap that you would get in Writer's End except two things. Writer's End is going to give you the capability of clustering and then also applying something called the golden filter to find you know, more keywords that you possibly have a chance to rank for. Those two particular features are not part of Keyword Gap. I don't think that's a big deal personally. You can do some clustering outside the scope of this tool using ChatGPT or Claude, for example. But when you enter Keyword Gap, this is what you're going to see at your dashboard. I've already done some searches here. You can see one I did on gravel biking. You can see one that I did on a competitor's domain. Up in the top right-hand corner, you can go and look at your keyword lists that you've created. If you go over to the dashboard section, you can go into Keyword Explorer. You can use the Keyword Gap tool. You can use the Content Writer. So first, let's just look at Keyword Explorer. This is probably where you're going to be spending 
most of your time. But you can see here, you know, I've done a couple searches. I've got 48 left out of 50 for the month. So let's just go ahead and try a keyword. We can do a broader keyword like mountain biking. And the reason I continue to go back to mountain biking in a lot of my videos is because I just am familiar with all the articles that are out there. So I know if this is returning keywords that make sense for this particular niche since I know it so well. You can do a search by keyword, or if there's a competitor's domain, you could actually enter a domain here, like, like I did below. I did one on bikeradar.com just to see what kind of keywords that particular site was using. Or you can do a wildcard search, so mountain biking and then an asterisk, and then it would return like mountain biking shoes, mountain biking clothes, mountain biking grips, that kind of thing. There's a, variety, a wide variety of ways that you can use this keyword explorer, but in this case, we're just going to do just a regular keyword here, and we'll do this. It's going to be centered on the United States in English. Do the search. It gives you a SERP overview for mountain biking. You know, these are the top 10 websites that show up for that specific keyword mountain biking. It gives you some search volume. What's nice about getting this overall search volume for a broad keyword term like this is it gives you an idea of just how popular mountain biking is. And if you were doing some niche research, you could use that data and determine whether mountain biking is a niche you want to go into. Keyword gap returns this page after it's went in and looked at the keyword mountain biking. It gives you an overall search volume for the term itself. You get last month's search volume. You get the average over 12 months, the highest return in 12 months and the lowest. It gives you the top 10 websites that get returned when you search for mountain biking. It gives you some information here about cost per click. I'm really not interested in this too much because uh, I don't do ad buys, but it could be useful for somebody. It tells you how many keyword ideas that are available, 6,088. Then you can see, you know, month by month what the search volumes are like. So again, if you were doing some niche research and you were just curious, hey, is mountain biking something that I want to try and do a blog about, you can see if this particular niche is dramatically affected by seasonality. This section of the screen is where I think you're going to spend most of your time. It's the keyword data section and the insight section. But let's go ahead and take a look at just the keyword data itself. You can do a lot of different filtering here. So you could type in something like how in the search. And then what's going to happen is it's going to go ahead and filter. It's going to show you all of the keywords that start with how. How to get into mountain biking. How dangerous is mountain biking. How to get better at mountain biking. These are the types of informational blog posts a lot of new sites might write about. So as we look at these filters, if you're not sure how some of these filters work, Let's say you mouse over include. It tells you exactly how to use this filter. It tells you how to use the exclude filter. Talks about volume. Let's say you want to only see keywords for a volume of zero to 100 searches per month. You can do that. Again, if you do ad buys, you can see the cost per click for some of these keywords word count. You can set the minimum and maximum number of words in the results. So if you're looking for very long tail keywords, you could say, I only want to see results with six words or more in the keyword phrase. You can also see trending keywords, which is pretty interesting. So what are people looking for? And that might help you decide what keywords you want to target. You can export keywords to an XLS file or a CSV file. You can even develop your own revenue forecast for targeted keyword lists with this function. I've never tried this, but it's something you can do. If you wanted to, you can click a keyword and then create an article. Uh, I'm not going to go too deep into it, but let's say you wanted to do an article on mountain biking trails near me, pick the keyword, and then start the article creation. They also have insights. Now, insights is just another view of these keywords, and they're going to be those informational kinds of blog posts that you might write. So, you know, what is mountain biking? How to jump a mountain bike? Is mountain biking dangerous? What are mountain biking shoes? 
These are all ones that you can go in and take a look at. Now, if we go back to the keyword data and we do something like this, let's type in how again, and how dangerous is mountain biking. Now, if you just click on this, here's what you're gonna see. You're gonna get some information about keyword difficulty, about search volume. So last month it was searched 90 times. The highest amount of times it's ever been searched is 170 and 70 is the lowest. The interesting thing is this is very seasonal, right? In January and February, December, when people aren't riding mountain bikes, you're not gonna get a lot of search volume here. And then you can see, you know, in May, June, July, August, September, when people really ride mountain bikes a lot, you can see more search activity at that point. It says the keyword difficulty is zero out of 100. You know, it probably is a fairly easy thing to, to rank for. This is ranked as a lower difficult keyword. And you can just go in and look at any of these, like how to start mountain biking, click on it, get some search volume, get some keyword difficulty, look at the SERPs to see what you're going to have to compete against. Now, let's say you decided you wanted to save a couple of things here. How do I improve my uphill mountain biking? How to start mountain biking? How to improve my mountain biking? How to learn? Just grab these. Now what you can do is add them to a keyword list. So just click add to keyword list, click new, put in mountain biking, and there you've added those keywords. So it's very easy to just go in and find keywords. And let's say you want to create an article on how to start mountain biking. I'm probably not a big advocate of using this as your primary AI writing tool, but if you did want to create an article, click here and you'd need to put it in a project. So we'll just do create new project. We'll call it test. We're gonna do a blog post. We're going to do, oh, let's do friendly, inf let's just do informative explanatory. We want an article title, description and outline. We want it to write the whole article. We can click create and it's gonna go in and you open the project and then it starts writing the article. I'm just gonna close out this little AI assistant, but they have an AI assistant here. You know, it's auto writing, you can do outlines, you can do text rewriting, you can do branded content. Again, is this the right AI writer, long form writer tool for you? I don't know. But again, look, it's 273 words. It's just not a super comprehensive writing tool. I don't consider it something I'd use for writing, but it's there if you need it and it does give you some credits to do that kind of thing. Another thing beyond the keyword explorer is this keyword gap. You can find gaps in your keywords and look for areas of opportunity. Let's say we do this, Mike's test project, and we do select. Now, there's a few things you can do. You can connect this to your Google Search Console if you want to and pull data from there. You can compare lists. In this case, I'm going to just compare a couple of lists. I've got one called competitor keywords. Let's add this list and we're going to compare it with this gravel biking list. We'll select that one. We'll do add. It's going in. It's looking for captured keywords, shared keywords, unique keywords, and missing keywords. This is probably going to work a lot better if you do it with your Google Search Console. As you can see, there's no overlap here. So typically, let's say you went in and you have a niche. Let's say you're writing in the gravel biking niche. And so you already have a gravel biking site. You've already written 10 or 15 articles and have a variety of keyword queries that are coming back in Google Search Console. It could go back and look at those queries, compare them against what you've chosen in your keyword list, see where there are things that are overlapping, and then see where there are opportunities for you to write about things that you haven't written about yet. So that's the way the keyword gap tool would, would work. I just am not going to connect it to my Google Search Console at this point. So I just tried to get it to compare a couple of uh, different lists of keywords to see if it would show opportunities. Uh, I think it would be better, again, hooked up to your Google Search Console if you choose to do that. I'm going to spend most of my time in Keyword Explorer. I, ha I have Writer's End. This is my Writer's End account here. And that's where I've spent most of my time is using the Keyword Explorer finding these different opportunities to write about. So again, keyword gap to me is just sort of a, a lighter version of what Writer's End offers in their more full-featured tool.
So you get a scaled down AI writer, you're missing a couple of keyword capabilities that you get in writer's end. Personally, I would have liked to have seen writer's end just re-release their software as a lifetime deal for a while. Um, I'm not sure why they made the business decision to, you know, sort of take a subset of their functionality and release it as a completely different product on AppSumo.com. But regardless, my opinion is if you have no keyword tools at all, this would be a good one to use. It's pretty easy to go in and look at this keyword explorer and see if there are opportunities for you. How do I compare it to something like low fruits or keywords people use? Keywords people use is a little bit of a different tool. It really isn't looking at keyword volume as much as it is giving you a way to find these really long tail keywords that give you an opportunity to rank. I think Low Fruits is the other tool that I use and have a subscription to. Low Fruits definitely competes with this tool. I think it's a little easier to understand and work with. But again, it's not a lifetime deal, right? It's a subscription. So you get X amount of keyword credits. And then when those credits are gone, you have to buy some more. This, you get 50 keyword searches a month. And if you're looking for long tail keywords, I think this tool would work really well for that. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section. Uh, I'll try to answer them the best that I can. And then, of course, if you're out at AppSumo, you can buy into this for as low as $69. And then, you know, you may want a, a tier two or buy three codes, depending on how many keyword searches you think that you need to do per month. So that's Keyword Gap. And until next time, Take care.